Hello, welcome to another Lawn Fun video. Today we are making cards using the new Build an Aquarium die set. So this die set has all the pieces for you to build an aquarium both in a landscape and portrait orientation, along with all of the items to decorate inside. So here's a look at what this die cuts out. It cuts out the body of the aquarium, then there is a short and a long piece. You cut two of those to decorate the top and the bottom to create either a landscape oriented aquarium or a portrait. There is a curve that cuts the sand for the bottom and then there's all these little pieces that cut out three different sized fish and some seaweed, some little rocks that layer on the bottom of the seaweed, and of course a cute little sand castle. So here's a look at how you make these two different orientations of the aquarium. So if you put the short pieces on the ends and turn it vertically, you get a skinny portrait oriented aquarium. And then using those long pieces that are the same sort of shape, you can put them on the top and bottom of the long sides and you get a traditional long landscape aquarium. And you can see how that sand layers behind there. And then all these little pieces you can just decorate inside the aquarium. The little rocks layer perfectly on the bottom of these seaweed pieces. There's a large rock and a small rock. And then there's also a seaweed piece that layers perfectly on top of this double seaweed where they cross over. So you can use two different colors if you like, which is kind of fun. In my example here, I just have two greens. And of course, these fish you can cut out from any color you like. And I think they would also be cool cut out of patterned paper. There's also these tiny little bubble outlines that you can use to decorate inside the aquarium. So I've got a piece of cardstock here that is two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And this is the overall size of the aquarium minus those little corners. So we're just gonna trim off the corners when we get this background created. But first I'm gonna do some stenciling on this background with the hillside stencils. I'm using peacock feathers, salty ocean, and blueprint sketch distress inks along with my blending brushes just to go back and forth and create some waves. So I'm going to start by just doing some simple waves across and then I'm going to go back over and crisscross them across each other so that it looks even wavier. And I'm just going back and forth between the colors. So here's where I'm going to start to cross over. So now I'm going to have these darker lines right along the edge that cross over each other. Now I'm not really worrying about switching out brushes for each color because they're all blending together. I just want like a blue background with a wavy texture. And I'm just trying to vary the curves that I use so that they don't all look the same. And you get this movement in the background by doing this, which I think is a really cool look. Now I'm getting towards the bottom here and this part's actually gonna get covered up a little bit with the ground that I'm gonna create inside this aquarium. But I just wanna finish it off and make sure it's all colored so that I don't have any white showing through when I have this in the background. Now for the ground of my aquarium here, I'm doing something a little different. I'm not making sand. I've cut this from some mermaid cardstock and I'm just putting some dots with my Copic marker because I want this to look like those really colorful aquarium rocks that you can get. You know, you can get them and they're like all different shades of aqua or blue all mixed together. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. But the dots were gonna take a long time. So I decided to do some splatters with some oxide ink. 
So this is some Peacock Feathers Distress Oxiding that I've just smushed onto my craft mat and added some water to, and I'm gonna flick it off of the block so I get lots of tiny little splatters. You can see that this makes quicker work of making this speckled stipple look for the ground of my aquarium. So I'm just gonna dry that with my heat tool, and then I'm going to do some more flex. So this just gives some nice layers. Once you dry it, they can kind of layer on top of each other and you get some darker spots. And then I'm just going to dry it again. And once I had it dried, I wanted to add some more dark. So I went back with that same Copic marker and just added some more dark spots. But this was definitely faster than stippling this whole piece with my Copic markers. Now I'm adding some flecks of white watercolor paint to my background, and I'm also going to add some flecks of white metallic watercolor to my background. I really like the look that the metallic splatters give. It gives it a little bit of shine when the light hits it in certain ways. It really gives the look of water in my opinion. And then I'm also adding some flecks of just clean water. I'm picking it up. It's off camera, my little cup is. But this kind of creates some bubbly looks to that background because it will react with that Distress ink. Now I'm going to layer my aquarium rocks on the bottom. And then I'm going to put the frame of my aquarium right on top. So first I'm going to add the top and the bottom. I'm making a portrait, a vertical oriented aquarium, and I'm using some rainforest cardstock for the top and bottom. So once I've got that on there, you can see that's gonna layer perfectly onto this rectangle that I've cut. But I'm gonna hold it in place and I'm going to trim off those corners because you can see those corners still stick out. And I'm not gluing it down just yet because I'm actually going to pop up the frame with some foam tape. So I'm just going to hold it in place while I trim those corners off to where my background piece is the same shape as my aquarium. You could also use some temporary adhesive to glue this down. Or if you're not making a 3D aquarium, you could just go ahead and glue it down. So I've got my pieces of my fish and my plants here. I've cut the plants from some sunflower cardstock and I'm just doing a little bit of ink blending with some orange so that these look like they go from orange to yellow. You know how you can get those plants at the pet store that have all those bright fluorescent colors? So that's kind of what I was going for by doing this. So these are going to go from yellow to orange. So I'm just using a finger dauber to add a little bit of ink to the bottom so that I get that kind of two-tone look. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my fish. So I've got them cut from some fake tan cardstock and I'm just adding some picked raspberry ink. So they're gonna be orange and pink. So there's some bright tropical looking fish. And I like using the little finger dauber for this because these are small pieces and I don't wanna completely cover it with ink. So I'm just going to do the same thing to my little fish here. And then I can add the rocks to the bottom of my plants that I have and I cut the rocks out of some peacock cardstock because this kind of goes with those aqua colored aquarium rocks I have in the bottom so I like the look of these bright colors to go with these fake plants that you have in the aquarium. And now I can just start layering my pieces inside. So again I just have that outer part of the aquarium just laying there for placement and I'm popping my little pieces in. I just put some foam on the back of that fish, some thin foam, so he's popped up just a little bit. And then I'm just gonna use liquid glue to put the plants down. And then I'm gonna use a piece of foam for that little fish as well. And 
And then I decided to add some of those really small fish that come into this die set. So these are cut from some sunflower cardstock, that yellow, and then I'm just adding a little bit of peacock feathers ink to the back side of them so that they can be two-toned as well. So it cuts two little fish. I'm only going to use one on this particular one, but it cuts a fish going both directions, which is kind of nice to have some options. Now I'm going to add the foam to the front of the aquarium so that it's popped up off this beautiful background that I've created. I've just taken a piece of foam tape and I'm cutting it long ways so it's a little skinnier and I'm just going to put those on the top and the bottom parts of the aquarium. I felt like those vertical pieces were too skinny to try and put foam on and I don't really need it there because these top and bottom pieces will hold this in place just fine. Now to create the card base that I'm going to put this aquarium on, I've got a piece of Spiffy Speckles paper here and I'm actually going to use the purple side but I wanted a stripe at the bottom that is that darker purple that comes on a piece of 12 by 12. So I'm going to be using that little strip. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting this to the size of my card base which is four and a quarter by five and a half and then I'm going to trim off that strip at the bottom and then that way I can take that piece that's at the top and flip it over. So I'm going to put my darker strip along the bottom of my card base and then now I can put the purple side up on the other side. I'm using the sentiment You're Fantastic. And I've just laid my aquarium here so I have placement. I'm just going to stamp that below it above that dark purple line. I'm going to add my aquarium right where I want it. I'm using liquid glue so I can make sure I have it all nice and straight and move it around and centered. Finally, I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to my fish because you know how you get that shimmery look on the scales of a fish. So I'm adding some glue with a quickie glue pen because it gives you just a small line of glue. And then I'm using the cap as a scoop to pick up that glitter and dump it on there and get just a little bit of glitter on my project. This is a tip from my friend Jen Cherkis and I just love how easy it is to use that cap as a scoop to add your glitter. I also added some glitter to the rocks of the plants. And then finally I'm going to finish it off by tying some unicorn tail twine around the bottom right along that line between my two pattern paper colors. Then I'll just secure that bow with a little glue dot right underneath the knot and now it will stay in place and my card is all finished. I love all that shimmer from the glitter and the metallic flecks in the background. For my second card I'm going to be making a shaker card and I'm using some really rainbow paper and some spiffy speckles paper. I'm going to cut both of these to four and a quarter by five and a half so they're the size of the front of my card. So you can see I've got a rainbow piece, my background piece, and a card base there. And then I'm going to work on my fish. So for this one, I cut them out of white, and I'm going to color them with my Copic markers. So I've just dropped them back into the negative space on the piece of white cardstock where I cut them out. This is just to hold them in place while I do some coloring. Just makes it a little easier than trying to hold on to them while you color. So for this fish, I'm just using some different tones of yellows and orange, and I'm going from darkest to lightest on each of these little sections of the fish that the dye kind of creates with those little scale details. And this is just another fun way to color your die cuts, especially if you don't have a whole lot of colors of cardstock, you can easily color them with your markers or your pencils or your whatever your color medium is that you like to play with. So I'm just doing the same for these little fish here. I'm just using a teal color and a green color. You can see I've also colored some of those medium sized fish, which I didn't actually end up using on this card. Now for the sentiment, I've got a banner strip cut from guava cardstock, and I'm going to use this sentiment 
that says, I see it's your birthday. And this fits perfectly on this banner. I'm stamping it with clear embossing ink. I've already added some anti-static powder. So I'm just going to stamp that down with the clear ink and add some white embossing powder to it. And then I'll just heat that up with my heat tool till it's all nice and melted. So I'm going to start to assemble my aquarium just a little bit. I'm doing a landscape oriented aquarium for this card and I'm using some peacock cardstock for the top and the bottom and then the frame of the aquarium is cut from some narwhal cardstock. I'm going to cut an opening out of this front piece of pattern paper and this is going to be sort of the window where my aquarium is going to go. So I just laid that banner there for placement and then I'm going to take the die that cuts the frame and it cuts an opening out of this piece of paper. Then I've added some double sided tape around that opening and I'm going to put a piece of acetate on the back side. Now I really wish I had traced this window onto my background before I put this acetate on, um, but I didn't. So I'm going to show you my little trick on how I figured out how to trace the opening for my placement of the pieces on the background. So I'm laying this on my background. I'm going to put my aquarium in the hole because that's where it's going to go. And then I'm going to use some purple tape to sort of make a hinge. So I'm going to get this where it needs to go. I'm going to tape it down. And then I'm going to wrap this piece of tape around to that spiffy speckles paper that's on the back side. And then this will put my aquarium where it needs to be on that back piece of paper. Now, like I said, I wish I had just traced this window before I put the acetate on, but I wasn't going to try and pull off the acetate to trace the window. So that would have been the easier method, but this is an easy way to fix it. So I'm just going to trace around that with a pencil, and then that will act as a guide on my background piece of paper so I know where the aquarium is and I know where to place all my elements inside. Because the aquarium itself is going to be on the front of the card, and then all the elements are going to be on this back background piece. I have a piece of purple spiffy speckles paper that I'm going to cut with that curve. And it's a little longer than that curve is, but I'm just going to snip it off. And then I can glue this right onto the background where I want it. So you can see how those pencil lines really work well as a guide to figure out where these pieces need to go. And then I'm actually, since I covered up part of my pencil lines, I'm just retracing them here just as my guide. I'm going to go ahead and put this onto my card base before I add all my decorative elements. And that way I don't have to try and do that after I've got everything glued down. And then now I can start to fill my aquarium. So I've cut the little sandcastle from some craft cardstock and I'm just adding a little bit of coloration with some vintage photo distress ink. And then I'm gonna do the same with the plants and the seaweed I cut. I cut those from cilantro and I'm adding a little bit of Lucky Clover distress ink to the tops of them. And I've also added some gray rocks to the bottom of those already. So I've got all my pieces sort of placed where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and glue them down to the background. I'm not using any foam squares for these pieces on this one. Since it's going to be a shaker card, I'm going to have elements shaking around in there. And I didn't want any extra dimension for those pieces to get caught on. They're still going to kind of get caught on some of these pieces of cardstock just because of the thickness of the cardstock. But the less things for them to catch on, the better. And then I decided for these fish, I wanted to add some little googly eyes to them. So I have some really tiny ones that I'm adding to those little fish. And if you don't have these, you could always just color a little bit of black behind the eye so that it looks like a dark eye. 
but I thought these would be a fun addition. And then I'm going to use a bigger eyeball for my big fish. So I just love that big googly eye on him. So now that I have all those pieces for the background in place, I'm going to completely surround the aquarium opening with foam tape. And I'm actually doing two layers so that I have plenty of space for all the shaker pieces to move around. And again, I'm using my pencil lines as a guide and I'm making sure that I have this foam tape outside of those pencil lines so it won't be seen through the window of the aquarium. So I've made my box for my shaker pieces to go into. And like I said, these are doubled up pieces of tape. So I'm just stacking them. So I have a little more space for those pieces to move around. And then I'm erasing my pencil lines so that you don't see them. And then I'm going to go around everything with my anti-static tool there so I get rid of any sticky, or at least as much as I can, on the sides of that foam tape. The less static in there, the less things will stick. But I, uh, things always seem to stick inside of a shaker card, at least a little bit. So I've got some little round circles here. I'm kind of making my own shaker mix. I also added some tiny seed beads that were in a very pale purple and a very pale aqua. And then I also added some bigger seed beads in a clear iridescent. I just think the beads help the pieces move around a little bit. And those circles, those iridescent circles I have, look like bubbles, which I just think is so cute. So I've filled my opening, or my box, I guess, with all my shaker pieces here. And I'm going to pull off the liner tape from all these foam pieces so that I can put that front piece on. And I'm just moving my pieces around to try and get them off any sticky areas that they might have jumped up onto when I pulled off the liner tape. And then now I can line up this front panel where I have the acetate right onto that background. And they line up perfectly. And you can see that all that foam tape is hidden behind there. And all those pieces are moving around pretty well. And then finally, I can take the aquarium and it's just going to pop into that opening that I cut out earlier. So I'm just going to add some adhesive runner to the top and bottom of the aquarium where I've got those wide pieces. And then I can just drop it in that die cut opening in that negative space that I cut out earlier and it will cover up the window perfectly. And then finally, I'm going to add my sentiment strip that I made earlier. I'm putting it on some really thin foam squares just so it pops up a little bit. I'm just gonna line that up below my aquarium. And then I have some of those little bubbles that the die cuts, and I'm actually adding those to the outside. So these are stuck straight to the acetate on the outside. And now my card is all finished. I just love this aquarium with those little shaker bubbles inside. I just think it's super fun. Now let's take a look at some examples from the design team. Letitia made this really sweet card and paired the aquarium with the year six stamp set for that sentiment and that cute little clam. Lynette made an aquarium using the oval die cuts to create an oval opening for her fish to swim in. And then Tammy made this super clever card using the tiny gift box cat add-on. I just love that the cat is feeding the fish. I love Elisa's aquarium with those fish and those plants cut from some patterned paper. I love Elena's coloring on her fish, and I also love that she used the wave borders for her background of her aquarium. And then Yainea made this super sweet aquarium. I love the color she used, and I also like that she didn't add the element on the top and made it an open aquarium. Super clever idea. Marine's cart is based on the shed aquarium when they let the penguins run around and see all the fish. Just so cute. 
And then Elisa's super sweet card is actually a window card. So it's cut from the front and then when you open it up, it is full of all those fish. I love Audrey's card with the watercolor background and I love how she used the elements inside without using the aquarium at all. And then Megan created this super cute three-dimensional shadow box card by modifying the shadow box die. And I just love all the dimension that she created and the coloring on her elements. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.